Hello everyone. Uh, today uh, I want to share a new uh, generative AI application uh, that is called a uh, Notebook LM. Uh, so it is provided by Google. Uh, it is free for now, and I think uh, it probably is the best uh, notebook AI applications that for students. So if whether they want to learn data science or machine learning AI or any other classes, so let's go ahead and try it. So. Uh, we go to the notebook lm.google and then we can log in with our uh, Google account. I think right now it only accepts Google account login. So we try to log in and I log in with my Google account. And then you need to upload some documents. So just like the OpenAI, AWS, the other giant AI uh, applications, you need to upload some data documents uh, to this website. And then they will use large language models to analyze, process your data, and also give you uh, accurate response. I think one highlight of this uh, uh, notebook LM is that so when you try to upload resources, you can upload the resources from your Google Drive, like Google Doc, Google Slides. You can also provide links from different websites and even uh, YouTube, YouTube videos. So for the videos, they must have captions. So they are not really analyzing the, the videos or images. They are just analyzing the captions in the videos. Or you can just copy and paste the text. Uh, they even support audios like MP3. Uh, so here I'm going to try to upload a syllabus of the class that I am teaching in this semester. So the, it is called artificial intelligence and machine learning. And you can see here, this is uploaded uh, documents. Uh, this is my syllabus, uh, where I provide like the office hours uh, and also descriptions, uh, learning objectives. I recommended uh, textbooks uh, and also greetings uh, and also schedule. So everything that should be in the syllabus. And they can identify some key topics uh, from the uploaded uh, document. Uh, they can also uh, create some notebooks, quick notebooks. For example, you can create a FAQ, a study guide, and a timeline, briefing. Uh, what really surprised me is that they can even create a podcast. So it's called Deep Dive Conversation. So like two people, uh, they are speaking with each other, and they are discussing the documents that you uploaded. So uh, let's try that. So let's try to create a podcast. Uh, let's generate some FAQ. Uh, let's also try timeline. And also, let's say a briefing of this document. Okay. And also, just like the other uh, gentle AI services, you can also type and also uh, chat with AI. So for example, uh, here are some created uh, response. Uh, I believe this is a briefing document. So they talk about the course overview, uh, the key themes, uh, and now some key uh, important facts. So it's a hands-on approach, AWS Academy, a code from the source, and also assignment, uh, resources, uh, etc. Uh, and also if you look at the uh, the timeline, so they just extracted the, the, the date, so like week one, week two, week three, uh, what uh, we are going to do. Um, and also the people, like the, the instructor and also the authors of the recommended textbooks. Uh, if you look at the F and Q, so uh, oh, that's a briefing document. I think, yeah, this is F and Q. So, uh, I think this is very helpful for if you, you're going to prepare for an exam. So you can upload professor's slides uh, to this notebook. And for each course, you can create a, a new notebook. So like they can give you some questions and also some answer, like what are the key concepts. Uh, and also, is programming required, uh, et cetera. Okay. And also the policies regarding late submissions. OK, so they gave you some. Uh, questions and also give some uh, answers. 
Okay, uh, we can also chat. So let's see, uh, we can ask questions from the, the syllabus. So when is the office hour? And they will give you a very accurate response uh, from the documents. So that is Monday and Wednesday. Uh, we also, I also provide the, the virtual office hours uh, on Zoom. And you can also see what is the uh, late submission policy. Okay, uh, so uh, in my class, I said there's a, a late penalty that is 10% per day. And let's see if they are able to uh, capture that information. Okay, uh, so the late submission policies. So late submission can be submitted multiple times before the deadline. And, and also uh, after the deadline, there will be a 10% per day. Um, and also you can also check the source. So if you click, there's only one document. So if you check the source and you can, they can show you the, in the original document that where those information are coming from. So. Uh, it's very helpful, and you can also save those responses to a new node. Uh, you can even give it a different names. So for example, you are taking the, the machine learning and the AI. So, okay, so they say machine learning and an AI nodes. Um, and also now the, the podcast is ready. So you can see just within like uh, one or two minutes, they are able to create this deep dive uh, podcast. So uh, let's listen to this. Ever feel like AI is everywhere you turn, but you're not really getting it? Yeah, like it's this big mysterious thing. Exactly. We know it's important, but the how, what, why, it's all kind of blurry. It can feel like everyone's speaking a different language. And that's why we're here. To break it all down, unlock the secrets of AI. We're diving deep. But think of this as our AI crash course. And to make it real, we're using a real college course syllabus as our guide. Oh, interesting. So no abstract theories here. Not a chance. We're looking at Introduction to Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning taught at James Madison University. Okay, and who's the professor? The one and only Dr. Zubin Wei. And get this, you can actually find him online. Website, YouTube, the whole nine yards. That's always a good sign. Accessible right off the bat. Right, like he okay. actually wants people to understand this stuff. So what's the course all about? Well, looking at the syllabus, it's not just some theoretical deep dive. Yeah, a lot of courses just skim the surface. This one seems different. It emphasizes real world skills right from the start. I see that. And they even offer an AWS Academy badge. That's a big deal in the tech world. Hold on, back up. AWS badges. Sorry, AWS stands for Amazon Web Services. It's a leader in cloud computing. And these badges mean you've shown you have practical skills using their platform. So it's not just a piece of paper saying you took a class. Exactly. It shows you can actually do something. Whether you're a student trying to land a tech job or just looking to upskill, that kind of credential can be a game changer. Makes sense. It's like anyone can say they can bake a cake. Right. But having that award-winning recipe to back it up, that's what matters. Exactly. Okay, so we've got a legit professor, industry-recognized credentials. Yeah. What else? And check out the projects. These aren't just some made-up scenarios. We're talking forecasting, facial recognition. Wait, really? Like the facial recognition technology being used everywhere? The one and only. And that's not all. They're even building their own chatbots. Whoa. Okay, so we're not talking about some far-off future. This is stuff that's already impacting our lives, like, right now. Exactly. These projects show students how AI is already woven into everything, from personalized recommendations to automating tasks. It's all powered by AI. So this course. It's about understanding the engine under the hood. It's like that scene in The Matrix. Where Neo sees the code. Yeah, maybe not that dramatic, but you get the idea. We're going beyond the buzzwords and seeing the actual nuts and bolts. Exactly. Empowering stuff. Okay, so we've got a passionate professor. All right, uh, so I'm going to stop here. So. Uh, I think uh, this chat pod, uh, this uh, this podcast is amazing. So it's great. So they can extract the information that from the documents that provided, and they have a real human-like voice of two persons, and they are talking about the information from the state bus. All right, and also other nice features. So. Uh, you can upload multiple documents 
and also each document can contain um, a huge amount of information. So uh, let's go back from the notebook. So actually, uh, they provided the uh, guidelines of using the notebook LM in another notebook. So if we open this uh, introduction to notebook LM document, you can see here they have the those are the official documents that provided by Google, uh, where you can read the original information, like uh, what is LM, uh, notebook LM, and also what are the limitations, price, etc. Uh, so you can read those uh, documents one by one. Okay, and what really amazing is that you can also type and ask questions. So for example, how many uh, documents I can upload? I should say uh, how many documents I can upload for each, re uh, each notebook. So we can upload 50 resources. Okay, so that's a huge amount of the information. And what is the size limitation for each resource? Okay, so how many words uh, or tokens? Okay, so you can see that for each resource, it can contain maximum of five hundred thousand words. Okay, so that's almost that's that's almost the size of the textbook. Well, um. They don't recommend uploading copyright protected materials to Notebook LM, but uh, you do can upload, like say, for each single document or resource, you can upload 500,000 words, and you can upload up to 50 of those documents. So I think that's that can take more documents or resources than the other uh, applications like OpenAI or, um, or AWS, I mean, for the considering that as a free resource. So talking about price, let's see, is the price of using Notebook LM. Okay, and for now, it is free. So uh, it's not guaranteed that it will it will always be free all the time, so so you can check that. Uh, for now, it is free, and you can also ask how can we share the notebook. So can I share the notebook with our students or with our my colleagues? So how can share the notebooks? Okay, so I really like the feature that. For the, uh, for the documents of using this service, and they also provide a document, a notebook like this. So, um, so like, um, you can share the, the, you create notebooks with other people, and there are some uh, limitations. So for example, uh, you can only share the notebook with people that who have the same email address with the same uh, domain name. So, for example, you can share that either with Gmail, then the other people can only be Gmail. Uh, if you are using the Educate account, uh, you can only share that with other uh, Educate account. Okay, and you can share with a maximum number of fifty other individual users. Okay, so that's uh, some basic usage of the uh, of the notebook LM. All right, uh, so that's another notebook. Uh, so. Also, another feature that I really like is that they are able to extract information from the videos that upload on YouTube. Again, they are not analyzing the real videos like images. Uh, they are analyzing the captions that from those videos. So let's try another notebook. And for this one, I'm going to up to analyze some YouTube videos. And those videos, like uh, I have a YouTube channel, LB Social, where for example, I have a, a playlist that introducing the data analytics with generative AI. So right now I have uh, eight videos. Uh, and so I'm trying to import those videos into the uh, notebook LM. So 
I think I can copy this URL and paste here. Okay, uh, so that's uh, the first video that I'm talking about is uh, OpenAI GPT-4 uh, to analyze data in the SQL database. So that's pretty accurate. Uh, you can see that they are not analyzing the video itself. It's, it's uh, instead they are analyzing the captions that from that video. Um, and we can add uh, more videos. Like see, each notebook can can have like up to fifty resources. So let's keep adding videos. Like the second one. Okay, so this is the last one. Um, I really wish that in the future, uh, Notebook LM is able to add uh, videos from a playlist. So if you support that, that would be great. So it won't take so many time that uh, to um, upload each individual videos. So I'm going to call this one Generative AI Date Analysis Notebook. Okay. And say, suppose uh, you have uh, you have a video tutorial that is less than 50 videos. Uh, actually, for most of the lectures, I think um, I think less than 50 is enough. So uh, if you check my other courses, uh, for example, I have classes like Python, data mining, visualization, uh, machine learning. Uh, you can see that for data mining, I have 45 videos. Uh, visualization, I have uh, 43 videos. Uh, I also have labs. So for the data mining lab, there are uh, 16 videos. Data visualization, there are 14 videos. So I think uh, 50 data resource limitation is def definitely enough for a single class. All right, so now I uploaded those videos. So let's see uh, what are the videos. Talking about okay, and let's see what's the response. Uh, actually, instead we can also ge generate a briefing documents. So I think that's uh, uh, that will give us uh, similar information. All right, so here I got the briefing documents. So. They talk about uh, serverless architecture for real data analytics, AR-driven insight, local solution for data analytics. Um, OK, uh, let's go back to the chat. OK, uh, so serverless dashboard and visualize social media data in real time, uh, AI-powered Python locality analysis. Uh, analyze Twitter with ChatGPT, uh, analyze Twitter data with OpenAI. Uh, they also listed the, the specific uh, analysis like sentimental translation, uh, emotion detection, summarization, and also create a, a full machine learning pipeline without coding, um, SageMaker. Okay, uh, let's also try to see if they can really understand or can help us to. Uh, uh, identify like how to uh, for a specific question like see how to um, clean data with AWS Canvas. Okay, so I think we covered that in one of our uh, video. All right, and so here we are got the response. Uh, so Canvas does not appear to offer specific guideline on cleaning tweet data. Yes, we didn't uh, clean tweet data. Uh, we can bring data into Canvas, uh, review and adjust the data types as needed. Uh, we can address missing values, like import missing values, add indicators, drop rows with missing values. Uh, we can also detect and handle outliers, and clean data inconsistencies. Um, where we use a Python code. Uh, we can also drop irrelevant columns based on our uh, analysis. And we can also leverage 
uh, building transformers for different cleaning tasks. Okay, and also we could also use the chat for data craft, which was not available in AWS Academy. Okay, um, I think it's uh, pretty accurate. Um, let's see, we can try to ask another question. Let's see uh, how Genity AI can help data analysis. Yeah, I think this uh, is a little bit general question, and let's see uh, what we can get from those uh, those videos. Okay, those are the response. So they can help generate SQL queries. That's right. We did that one in uh, one of the videos. Explain the code. Yes, we can do. We did that one in one of the videos. Uh, generate code for uh, data analysis, uh, summarize text data, so Gent AI can analyze large vol volume of text data, like Twitter, uh, provide cons concise summaries. Uh, for example, you can feed collection of tweets into ChatGPT, uh, or you can use OpenAI, I think. Uh, translate taxes. Uh, they also gave us some important considerations, for example, data privacy, uh, accuracy, which we mentioned a lot uh, in the uh, video tutorials, and it is an iterative process. So uh, you need to refine your prompt and provide additional context, etc. Uh, I'm curious, where did they find those information? So I click nine. Oh, they just selected the entire caption. Oh, all right. Okay. Um, so those are response, and um, I'm pretty happy with those. Uh, with that, um, uh, let's see if we can ask the question that is not covered in this video. In those videos, let's see uh, how to collect Twitter data. Okay. Uh, so in those tutorials, uh, I didn't talk how to collect Twitter data. So those are in my other uh, video tutorials. Let's see what are the response. Uh, using the Twitter APIs. OK. Well, not explicitly stated. The resource suggests using API to collect Twitter data. And that's what they mentioned. Uh, mentioned using Twitter API, indicating that different versions exist. Yes. Other results mention that product extract. So using V2 as the API, highlighting it automatically extract entities uh, and suggest that simplify okay, rate limitations. Uh, do not provide specific details about rate limitations. You only consult with develop. Okay, that's what I, this is something that I really like. So yeah, we, I didn't uh, introduce the collecting part in those videos, however, they were able to refer some information from those existing videos, like, yeah, so uh, we didn't teach data collection, however, so you can refer to other resources. And they can also grab the information that are relevant to data collection. Uh, OK. Um, OK, let's ask another question that is not covered in the video as well. So is Collecting Twitter data free. Okay, uh, it's not. It's also not covered in those two, uh, videos. And let's see what are the response. Okay, and here are the response. So we also discussed method of collecting data. It didn't provide a definite answer whether it's free or not. But uh, very nice. So uh, it means that they know the limitations of the resources. So uh, they are not like uh, so Notebook LM are not using uh, the print in the data or the data from other resources to give answers. So they are limited the information that to the resources that we uploaded. Which means that if the if our resources contain errors, then the response will contain errors. Um, uh, but they do acknowledge that they don't have that information. So they they just didn't just make up the answers for you, and they just tell you they don't have the information. So they don't know whether or not it is free. Uh, however, from the videos, they have some other information provided. 
like some clues. For example, there are different uh, APIs, uh, and uh, it may involve cost. We are using the API free or so. It says did not specify whether it is free or not. Okay, and you need to check the Twitter developed documents. That's very nice. And also, uh, there are also rate limitations and also um, include in conclusion. So there is no definite answer whether or not it is free. OK, uh, so I think this is a, is a great answer response. Uh, that means that the, the information extracted are limited by the resources that we provided. Uh, so they are not generate some hallucinations, that which is a big problem of LM. Um, LLM. Um, however, we should be cautious that if the if our resources contain errors, then they will give error a wrong response.